Now let me tell you about the hillbilly butcher. Carl really wasn't much of a looker. Spend his days in the woods all alone, but if you crossed his path, he'd cut you down to the bone. Hadi 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 ha. Poor man, poor man, poor man. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Glad you could attend. And today on the chopping block is the legend of the hill, Billy Butcher. Now I'm so frustrated with my news of the poltergeist remake i hit the indie scene and found this independent horror film directed and co-written by ja uh, joaquin uh, montalvan which i hope i pronounced that right uh, he brings us the story of carl henry jessup who spends most of his days on his land lamenting about them olden days and how much they're better than today well he's also kept company with his half-sister ray lynn who pretty much takes care of him uh and you also have a buddy if you will in the form of Billy Wayne, all right? Uh, but, you know, you got people trespassing on his lawn and doing things, and uh, not his lawn, his property, on his land, and you got people doing things on his land he doesn't like, and he decides to dispatch him the old backwoods justice way. We get to see the gory uh, acts that he performs there. Folks, the legend of the hillbilly butcher was a lot of fun for me. I, I really liked it. First off, I just liked the overall feel and, and the tone of the movie, okay? Definitely captured that 60s and 70s grindhouse feel, along with the look in general, the film, the scratches on the frame, and the uh, overexposure in some scenes, and that really captured that well, which is kind of tough to do nowadays in the digital age, but they did that really well, and I, I loved the old feel that it just looks like this belongs in some seedy theater town downstairs in the 70s, you know, with the leaky pipes and not really good popcorn type of grindhouse theater, you know, definitely would fit in there perfectly. So they captured that and accomplished that well. Now the performances in here are great. I actually really enjoyed Teresa Holly's uh, Ray Lynn. She was a great, uh, you know, compliment to the Carl Henry Jessup played by Paul E. Respes. She was a great compliment to the two had really good chemistry. You buy in that they are kin, and uh, you really get the feeling like she is taking care of Carl Ray, and uh, not only just out of you know obligation for kin, but she feels kind of sorry for him because you do uh, overall you, you actually kind of connect a little bit with Carl Ray. I know he's the main butcher, if you will, but you do kind of feel sorry for the guy. Guy just wants to be left alone and people off his land and people keep trespassing, you know. And uh, plus he's got a few other uh, screws. Loose, but you do you do kind of feel sorry for Carl uh, Henry uh, Jessup. Now uh, he, his buddy Billy Wayne, I love that name. <laughs> it's played really well by Chris Shumway, and you even have uh, Jacquin, the director, pulling an old Alfred Hitchcock and making a small appearance in here as a drunk hillbilly. You got some great performances by people who've done mostly indie stuff, nothing on a big screen, but I hope to see them doing more, because all of them do really well and sell their characters. You really feel like they're from the backwoods, okay? And no one overplays it. There is a little bit of humor in here, but not a lot. Just enough to give it that feel and lighten up some of the darker scenes in there, like some of those old cult 70s uh, films did, alright? Uh, overall look and production design were great. Uh, the audio was just maybe a little bit too crisp to capture that, you know, that 70s feel, but in this case, that's good because, you know, with the audio, you could understand and hear everything, unlike some people who try to go too low budget with the audio and then you can't hear much of anything. So, audio was really good, a little bit too crisp for a 70s film, but uh, definitely not a, um, it, not a bad thing against it because, again, you could hear everything. We like the sound design as well that they had in this film. Overall, The Legend of the Hillbilly Butcher is an excellent low-budget film, uh, slasher film, if you will. It's got a great story to it, some fun characters, and definitely is a throwback to that 70s, 60s grindhouse. About the only thing I might say about it is that there might have been a little bit too much elements thrown in to give it that old style feel. Uh, we got the impression really quick, but there were a few uh, areas where the, the frame was just a little too juddery and it was a little bit distracting in that much. But other than that, overall, The Legend of the Hillbilly Butcher definitely needs to be caught by those who like those throwback 70s grindhouse films, those who like the independent horror scene, or those just looking for something different than a remake, which is what Schlollywood appears to only have for us in the near future. And that'll about do it for us here at the final cut. Until next time, folks, keep that ticket stub. Yeah.